How's it going, everybody? Welcome to our very first webcast with the Pilot Institute and Unmanned Tactical Group Partnership, providing you with up-to-date news for specifically related to public safety. We're going to be doing these webcasts every other week, and these webcasts are sponsored by Adorama. The purposes of this is we want to be make sure that we're able to provide you with as much up-to-date information about different legal things going on, conferences, trainings. We want to make sure that you have all the information that you possibly could get as the ever-evolving environment that we have today for public safety and drone world. On today's agenda, we're going to be talking about the legislation that's taking place in California and in Texas. We're going to talk about the Bell Textron and DGI legal suit that just got concluded and how that can be affecting everybody. And then we're finally going to wrap this up with different conferences and training that's coming up. And then we have a lot coming forward, so we want to make sure that everybody knows where they could go to make sure that they get the best training and conference information available today. First up, we're going to talk about legislation in California and Texas. In California, we had Assembly Bill 740. Chief Kennedy with Chula Vista Police Department went to the Congress and, was, and spoke about how that bill would impact public safety agencies across the nation, not just in California, and what that might mean for those programs. The concerning part about Assembly Bill 740 was that it adopted from a state perspective the National Defense Authorization Act of 2019, Section 889. And what that did is it basically said that if under the National Defense Authorization Act, if it was adopted that DGI could no longer be flown, it would be adopted in California. What was also concerning is that the bill also included the ban and prohibition of operations for any aircraft that was on the Department of Commerce ban, which immediately would prohibit DGI platforms from being able to be flown. Now, that doesn't mean that any other drone like Autel or Skydio or Parrot would be, it would be implicated in this, but any agency that was utilizing DJI in California would have to come up with a policy and a plan to discontinue the, the use of those uh, according to this bill. The great news about that is through Chief Kennedy's efforts uh, and other agencies that were letting those legislators know that, hey, this bill could be problematic for us, uh, they decided to table the bill at this point in time. Uh, they're also looking to see how they can make the amendments on those and see how they can make the uh, the bill be universal for any agency that's looking to run utilize drone programs. In Texas, we had Senate Bill 541. This bill was very, very similar to Assembly Bill 740. It also was a state adaptation of the National Def uh, Defense Authorization Act. What the implication of that is just like in California, if the federal if the federal entities ended up adding DJI to that list, then the state agencies in the state of Texas and the government entities in the state of Texas would be implement uh, would be required to sunset their programs if they were running DJI platforms and it was found to be under the National Defense Authorization Act ban as well. Uh, what is also great about that is we also were working with our legislators here in Texas. Under 541, the senator and authors that wrote this bill also agreed to have tabled this. We also had three other uh, country of origin bans going on in the state of Texas. We had Senate Bill 1986, House Bill 4201, and House Bill 4737. All of these were very, very similar to the state of Florida ban where everything that DGI got banned out. Um, and that would also include Autel, anything that would come from China. Uh, so we got with those legislators as well. Uh, we went through a lot of different associations like AUVSI Lone Star. We went through t uh, Texas Municipal Police Association. We talked to a bunch of sheriff departments and their associations as well. And we were able to provide our concerns about these bills to those legislators. Great news is they were very receptive to that. And they want to make sure that we are not going to be handcuffed and be restricted in how we're going to be able to do our job safely and effectively. Uh, so that's something great. Uh, it looks like those also have been tabled, and we're working with them to make sure that those bills, if they do go forward, are going to be conducive for everybody uh, utilizing drones from a public safety perspective. Next up, we also have the lawsuit. Uh, the lawsuit where Bell Textron versus DGI just came out. It was a $279 million lawsuit. Uh, DGI lost that. The implication of that is it doesn't just touch DGI. If Bell Textron decided to go after all of the drone pro, all the different manufacturers, they have the ability to do that with a patent infringement. 
Uh, some of the implications of those is under the patent patents that Bell Textron had were items like active tracking. Uh, it initially was designed around an aircraft to track a vessel, but the way that they did the verbiage in those patents is it was universal to anything that an aircraft would track on the ground and maintain velocity and altitude. It also implemented uh, points of interest and orbits. It implemented hover and hold, anti-collisions using vision sensors. Everything that, that our drones are utilizing on a daily basis on every platform, whether it's Skydio or Brink or, or DJI, Autel, Parrot, you name it, they all use these types of functionalities. And all of these were, were patented by Bell Textron a long time ago. Uh, so we're looking at what how what the fallout is going to be on that. Uh, DJI was the big fish; they went after them first, uh, and unfortunately, it looks like uh, it looks like they lost that suit. Uh, so stay tuned on that. We're gonna we're gonna keep a close eye on what that actually means. Uh, initially, it's probably gonna be a little bit of a price hike on all of their platforms across the board uh, to help offset the cost of that uh, of losing that legal battle. Finally, we got conferences and trainings coming up. In June 20th through the 23rd is Law Enforcement Drone Association's conference in Nashville. Uh, the great thing about LIDA is they are a very scenario-driven uh, conference. So if you're looking for pilots to come and get great stick time, come out there and see us. Uh, you're going to be able to fly NIST. You're going to do search for person operations. We even have uh, complexness courses, interior tactical operations, and we also have seminars. Uh, so it's not just for the basic pilots or, or even advanced pilots. It's also for supervisors and administrative people. We also have supervisor tracks and things of that nature so that you can come and figure out what best practices are. Uh, so come check us out, Law Enforcement Drone Association in Nashville, June 20th through the 23rd. Uh, and finally, the last conference that we have on, our, on the books is going to be Interpol's Drone Expert Summit, going all the way back to uh, the home base at Chula Vista, California. Uh, October 23rd. The focus for that conference is going to be Drona's first responder programs as well. We're going to talk about the history. We're going to talk about where we are now and where we're going in the future. Uh, so if you're interested in, in that, by all means, please, please, please come and put in for it. Uh, we would love to see you out there. That's going to wrap this very first uh, webcast. We hope to see you on the next one. Have a great day and stay safe. Mm -hmm.